they were talking of the same hymn. When the drama finally ceased dad looked at me with a strange expression. I realized I was still in my sundress. Don't tell me you were whoring out again. I am used to all this now. It does hurt every time he calls me something like this but it doesn't surprise me anymore. It was Nadia's birthday. She invited me. I lied. Remembering her words from earlier. For the first time in these years. Don't you dare step out without my knowledge. I don't want others to know I have a slut of a daughter. He said in disgust and went from there. My eyes got filled with tears but I forced myself not to cry. I was so happy when Aaron dropped me home and he spoiled it all. Why can't he see me happy? Even if that happiness is the rarest thing for me? I sighed and went back to my room. The next morning I got up early and cooked breakfast for everyone. As I sat down to have it with them, I realized it was all very tensed between dad and Lahaina. Usually she is taking to Julia or dad but today she was completely silent. Dad even passed few glares at her. Who was responsible for this? No, it is not Aaron. It's me. It's because of me he didn't go to the party. And how can I forget the thing between Lahaina and him? It's wrong to even like him knowing she and Aaron may get engaged soon if my assumptions are right. I decided to spend my day roaming around the city. I love to travel but I'm not allowed to go out of town. Dad or Lahaina never take me with them. I can't go out anywhere but I can definitely move around the city. I called Nadia and she agreed instantly. We first went to a library, my heaven, and spent the major part of the day there. Then we went to an art gallery. It was a surprise from Nadia for me. I love to paint. I can probably just spend my entire life painting my imaginations on a canvas. But dad doesn't like it. Once he saw me and mom painting, he got furious and beat mom like a beast. According to him it's all useless and mom should not encourage me to do what is not approved by him. The paintings were beautiful. Many people don't appreciate art, or those who do, don't really know what it really is or means. But I can feel the imaginations and thoughts of the painter, seeing these, while he she painted it. There were some which Nadia couldn't understand so I told her about them and she really seemed fascinated by it. Then we went to a small restaurant and had our lunch where she demanded the details of my dinner with her Mr. Hong. She was literally jumping on her chair listening to me. Later, she went back to her apartment as she had to finish an important work for a meeting, that her boss asked. It was a warm and sunny day so I decided to go to a park and not home. I went to the nearest park and sat on an empty bench. There were children playing, their mothers sitting and looking after them. I was lost in my thoughts when my phone rang. Dylan. Hello sweetie pie. Ew. Where do you get these silly names? Dot. I said with a frown. Of course from my super intelligent brain. Well, I need a favor sweetie pie. He said stressing on the last word. To irritate me. Bark. I rolled my eyes. I want you to accompany me to a charity event. As my arm candy he teased. Why? What happened to the girls of this town? Dot. It's actually I'm fed up of girls around me. So they won't come to me if they saw I have a date. No. Ask someone else. I replied curtly, I did ask your knight in shinning armor but, dot, but, dot, I asked amused, I am sure there is something going on between them, I'll ask Nadia when we meet next, never mind, so you're coming, dot, he said after a long pause, no, big brother, I don't wish to work as an insect repellent for you, how about if I give you a candy, dot, he said in a serious tone, seriously, dot, I half yelled, two candies, dot, he chuckled, no, three candy, dot, with that I ended the call, he really gets too irritating sometimes, I thought about his request now, I should have said yes, but the way he asked made me refuse him, I will call him later, just as I was sitting in the park admiring mother nature, someone came and sat beside me, I was so lost in my thoughts that I completely missed who he was until he spoke, is there any possible way that you are thinking of me, dot, the man said in a voice that made me feel goosebumps, I know this voice, it's him, I turned my head to look at him, he was still wearing his formal clothes and looking handsome as ever, there was a small smile plastered on his face, I smiled looking at him, how can a person make you feel happy by just his presence, well, no, I was admiring the view, it's beautiful, I said looking at the sunset, indeed it is, he said, still looking at me, I don't know why, I felt he was not talking about the sunset, that thought made me blush and I shifted a little to hide it from him. We sat in silence for some time till he spoke again. You'll be attending the charity ball. Next week right? Dot. He asked. I don't know about which event he was talking of. Dad and Lahaina attend many parties. Events and ball. 
as it gives a very good platform to socialize which in turn helps dad in his business. But he never tags me along, nor he cares to tell me about any such party. Caroline, back to earth. I'll be out of the country this whole week so, I hope to see you there. You'll come. Dot. Aaron said with a hopeful expression. I thought for a while and then agreed. I like his company too much, and I can't miss out any opportunity to be with him. My conscience was warning me to say no but I ignored it for the first time in my life. Yeah, sure. I answered. Grady smiled. We talked for some more time on random things until his phone buzzed and he had to leave. Now I sat here thinking of a way to attend the ball. Dad will never allow me to come with them, and if I go there against his will, I can't even think of the consequences. But I want to meet Aaron. I know this was wrong and I should not do this but I want to. I promised myself. This will be the last time I'll meet him. He is not for me. He is for Lahaina and I can't betray my sister. No matter how much she hates me. I will definitely go to the charity ball to meet Aaron. For the last time. I will have to call Dylan. He asked me for it and I denied that time. He will act like a drama queen as I hung up on him but he will agree. After all he loves me so much. Dot. Hey. Lovely readers. So what do you think is gonna happen now? Well. Next chapter will be a surprise for all Aaron's fan. I'm one of them. Haha. <laughs> to all my silent readers. Guys. Vote and comment and show your presence. Love ya blooming rose 18. Chapter 11 her Aaron's pov. I want you to dig into his records and come back to me in 15 minutes. I ordered my PA Carter with a little fury. A few days ago I was informed of someone leaking important information to a different firm and today Melissa finally tracked down that traitor. I hate it when people play with me or disobey me and that bastard is gonna regret it badly. I got up from my comfortable chair to look at the beautiful view outside. The New York skyline. As I looked down at the busy street with cars stuck in traffic it reminded me of an angelic face. The same face that has evaded my sleeps at night. I was brought out of my thoughts by a knock on the door. Come in. I said in an authoritative tone. Sir. Here it is. Carter entered my office after precisely 12 minutes and handed me two files. His name is Jason Walter, works as an accountant in our London branch. He is 43, with a dead wife and three children, one girl and two boys to be precise. I'm not planning on kidnapping his family. Carter, just tell me what's needed. I glared him with a face devoid of any expressions. The manager of that branch says he was not aware of Walter's passing confidential information to that firm. Thought it's hard to believe him. We checked his and Jason's bank accounts and $50,000 have been transferred in each of them by an unknown source. I've already talked to Melissa on this and she is working to find...